Easy Flash. So I have here in front of me one perfectly functional Easy Flash Junior and one perfectly not functional Easy Flash Junior. So what is supposed to happen when you put this in a console is turns on, you get a Nintendo logo, it boots up. This is the same Easy Flash that I've been using in all my videos. I picked this up just about when they came out. It's been rock solid for me. This Easy Flash, on the other hand, when you boot it up, you just get a garbled Nintendo logo and it freezes there because the console is not completing the handshake properly. It's not reading the Nintendo logo off of the cart, therefore it thinks the cart is bad and refuses to boot. Uh, now, I've already done quite a bit of troubleshooting on this, including um, trying out new SD cards, and I've even tried it without the SD card. When you boot an Easy Flash Junior with no SD card, you still get a Nintendo logo, and then it gives you an SD card error. That's how it's supposed to... Well, the uh, Omega gives you an SD card error. This one just refuses to doesn't ever move past loading. This one, with no SD card, does the exact same thing. If your Easy Flash Junior does this, contact whomever you bought it from. Chances are it might still be under warranty. Um, I'll, even, I'll even swap the SD cards just to, just to prove it's not that, because this one was working fine with that SD card, and ta-da. Anyway, if your Easy Flash Junior is having this problem and it does not boot, contact the vendor that you purchased it from, the retailer. Chances are it's under warranty. Um, if not, if you're not afraid to completely void your warranty and on a chance that this might fix it, then uh, let's carry on, shall we? Again, contact the vendor first. Don't try doing it yourself unless you're prepared to forfeit the warranty. So the first step is, of course, to try this in other consoles. Believe me, I've already done that. I've tried this in just about every console I have. Next step is going to be to make sure that the cart contacts are clean. I've already cleaned this, but a good way to clean this is to take... Um, like a cotton swab or cotton bud or whatever the hell you call them. Take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, rub it all over the contacts. That'll clean it up nicely. Don't use sandpaper. Sandpaper does not belong anywhere near cart edge contacts, ever. Um, I've already tried cleaning this one. So the next step and something that I have seen work on the Easy Flash forums. Uh, is to reflow the connections on this cart. Now, I did a visual inspection of all of the solder joints, and I didn't see anything that um, stood out to me as an issue. Unfortunately, we do have two BGA chips, which does make this a little bit more difficult, but I think we can still I'm not going to I'm not going to physically remove the chips so I think we should still be able to work with that uh but unfortunately it does make things a little bit more difficult uh so I am going to go ahead and try and reflow the connections on these five chips specifically um I'm going to just drown this board in flux and hit it with hot air uh but first we do need to remove this battery because batteries and heat do not mix. Let's set that aside and just to double check. Yeah, still nothing. So, this is the flux I'm going to use. It's this TF2000 stuff. Um, it's what I have. I don't necessarily recommend it, but it certainly does work. Uh, 
it's it's what I use for hot air at least. I don't use this flux for regular soldering, but what we're gonna do is we're just going to drown all the chips in as much flux as possible. And this stuff is so viscous that it just it's physically painful to squeeze it out. But we'll get there. The more the merrier. And as soon as I hit this thing with hot air, flux is gonna melt and get all up in there. So it should be fine. Bear with me a minute, I'll be right back. Okay, I have finished applying a ton of flux all over this thing. Uh, I've also put it in a small PCB vise just to try and keep, uh, give it a little bit of layer separation from my desk surface because all I have is the silicone mat on top of my desk and I don't want to ruin my desk because we're going to be putting a lot of heat into this thing. Uh, so the next step is to use my hot air station. I have it set to 455 degrees Celsius. That's probably a little bit hot for what we're doing, but we'll see what happens. Uh, and just as a heads up, I don't know if my camera picks up on this, but I like to mention it every time. When I use my hot air station, it does cause my lights to flicker. So if you're sensitive to that sort of thing, um, you might want to look away. But uh, here we go. I'm going to spend a few minutes doing this. I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. I got my tweezers too. And this flux does put off a lot of smoke, so fume extractor if you have one. If not, get one. I know I said I was only doing those five chips, but I'm just going to do the whole board because why not? It's very little extra effort to just do the whole board. I'm fairly certain the problem is these two BGA chips up at the top here. 
that I'm reflowing and you can't even see. I'm just going to give them a gentle little nudge. We might have to redo this chip by hand. These solder joints don't look very solid from here. So screw it, we'll do it. We'll do it right now. Actually, what I should do is wait for this to cool down and then test it. But I just don't like how those look. So while it's still covered in flux, what the hell. extra solder off here now. Oops. When I angle it up to see all the flux runs away. People always make it look so easy, just sapping up that extra flux, or that extra solder. I always have such a hard time with it. I just think my iron tip isn't clean enough. There we go. I'm going to do the top ones too. At this point I should probably just do every side, but whatever. So the reason that leads me to believe it's the solder joints on this cart are um, the EverDrive X5 Mini flash carts that recently came out. The first batch of those had a rather prevalent and I'm sure costly defect where the um, BGA chips that were used on it just weren't soldered down properly. And so the fix was to pull the chips off, reball them, and then drop them back on. Now, unfortunately, I can't reball these, so we're just going to hope for the best to resolder them because I know another common problem with Game Boy carts is that these things are just really thin PCBs, so when you insert and remove it, the whole PCB tends to flex a little bit. And even though these are near the top instead of the bottom, I think that could still cause issues with solder joints cracking if they're not the most solid joints.
And even after I do this, I still have like an hour of cleaning ahead of me. But I gotta get all this flux out. I think it's time to replace my brass sponge too. No longer looks brass, it looks silver from all the solder in it. On the bright side, these solder joints are looking a lot better. But that could also just be the leaded solder I'm using over the unleaded stuff. Actually, I don't know if the original is unleaded. I assume it is. But it might not be. It's not like Chinese factories always uh, adhere to strict standards ROHS ah almost there see this is what my iron tip looks like after cleaning it that's not that's not clean joint. There we go. Alright, I think from here I'm going to leave every other joint and then just go and get this flux cleaned up. The only other ones I'd want to touch up would be these uh, voltage translators down at the bottom here. I'm going to touch up this one right here. That looks like it might be a short. Okay. It could have just been some schmutz floating around in the flux. I shall be back momentarily. Ooh, do I need to do this side too? Nah, that's probably fine. All right, I'll be back. I'm gonna go clean up the flux on this. Uh, so how I usually clean up flux is with um, isopropyl alcohol and then a soft bristle, bristle plastic brush and lots of rinses. So uh, bear with me. All right, so it's nice and clean. I accidentally got a little aggressive with the brush and took off the reset button. I just, or the menu button, I broke that clean in half, but that's probably fine because it probably wouldn't have worked right with um, flux or isopropyl alcohol in it anyway, so it is what it is. But now I gotta give this a while to dry because as you can see, it is still very, very wet. Um, the isopropyl alcohol should evaporate off of the surface and then I'm going to have to give it a little bit more time to evaporate from underneath the chips. So it's going to be a while. I'll be back. All right, so this hasn't quite dried to my satisfaction, nor have I actually cleaned it to my satisfaction. Uh, and I was going to go back and clean it. You can tell it's not quite clean because this should be a matte PCB, and you can see sections that are still shiny. And that's not drying no matter how much, how long I wait. Uh, that is still flux that I need to clean up, but that's besides the point. I did notice a problem with the soldering on my chip there, um, and my other phone just locked because I forgot to set the power settings on it. <laughs> uh, 
So let me unlock it here. And instead of taking a picture like a normal person, uh, let me just use my pretend microscope here and zoom in on these pins. And you can see some of them, like the second from the left, let me, uh, let me take a picture and then I can zoom in on that. And, oh dear, it has to add the finish touch finishing touches. Uh, it's not the greatest, um, but if you rewind back, you, you should be able to see that this pin in particular, this pin, uh, these two pins, they're not actually connected with the board. There's solder on the pin and solder on the pad, but the pin itself is lifted. That is what I spotted when I was trying to solder them on. You can see all of these pins look like there's the solder is trying to stretch up. That is one of the things I spotted when after I hit it with the hot air. I didn't notice that because they were still covered in flux. Um, that after I tried touching them up, it didn't actually work. Uh, but this is not going to work as is. And spoiler alert, I did already try it. Um, this is not clean to my satisfaction. Again, I would clean this up further, but it should be good enough to test. And you can see even worse than before. So let's fix that. I'm fairly certain it's those pins there. That is, well, I know these pins are troublemakers, but I'm fairly certain it's these pins that are causing the current issue that I have. So let me get a little bit of flux. And I am just going to press down on the pins. And make sure they're all nice and flush against the board. I have no idea how that happened. That might be a manufacturing defect coming back to uh, bite us. Well, that's almost definitely a manufacturing defect, which might have never actually reared its ugly head, except that I hit it with hot air. And again, my apologies for the wonky lighting. I'll get that fixed at some point, I swear. Looking at it through the camera. And these last two pins, I think I tweaked one of them over a little bit. But otherwise, that looks good. Let's try and tweak it back. <sighs> Still not in the right spot, but it's better. In fact, it's good enough. This is one of those times where I'm afraid if I keep trying to get it better, I'll just make it worse. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it. Let me get a little bit more flux on there. Put a little bit more solder on the iron. Actually, I'm going to clean it first. A little bit of solder. Those all look so much better than before, except for... Some of the ones I messed up.
There we go. Yeah. All right. Again, definitely still needs more cleaning, but I'll try it out. Check our progress. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, okay. Before I go any further and ruin it, I am going to clean this again. Uh, there's still a lot of flux on here. So same process as before. Isopropyl alcohol, toothbrush, um, and air dry. Derby. All right, so you can tell I did a much better job cleaning it this time on account of the fact that there are no shiny spots on the PCB except for right there in between that capacitor and resistor. But anyway, um, because I can't quite zoom in the proper way, let me show you this way. Uh, this is... Come on. This is some of the pictures that I just took. You can see it looks like there's still a little bit of solder between those two pins. I did just go ahead and touch that up off camera. It does look quite a bit better now. That's these two pins right there. Um, but you can see all of the pins now look like they're actually connecting to the pads. Um, this is the other side of that same side. You can see all the pins look Gucci as they say. Uh, this is the left side of the chip. You can see a lot of the pins still look like they're raised up above the pads, but I did check all of them and there is a solid solder joint between all of the pins and the pads. Uh, so if this thing does have problems down the line, I, I'm, I am going to have to redo all these joints and make sure to um, smoosh the pins down onto the pads. Um, but for now they look good. And I think that's all the pictures I took. Yeah. And then that's the first picture I took, which came out terrible. But you can see the little shadows between the pins and the pads on those two, that one, that one, and so on. Those were the ones that were causing me trouble. But anyway, I think it's had plenty of time. Now, ideally, I'd like to leave this for hours or even days to evaporate just to ensure that I have no problems, but unfortunately this is not an ideal world. The next best solution would be to bake this in an oven at like 80 degrees Celsius for half an hour or something. Um, don't, don't quote me on those numbers, I'd have to double check. Uh, but I don't have an oven that I can do that in either. Uh, but let's, let's try it out. So if all goes well, we should still get the Nintendo logo. It's going to try and load and then fail because there's no SD card in it. And just to prove there's no shenanigans, here is my other Easy Flash. I mean, not that I couldn't have three Easy Flashes, but there's that. I'm just going to use the same SD card. Loading, OS int, battery dr well, yeah, because there's no battery in it. Hmm? Huh? 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 All right. All right. That is exciting. Yeah, the time's all fucked up. That all seems to work. The real test will be the PC. And ideally I would switch boxes, but I just don't have any other Pokemon in this save. So that won't tell us anything, but we can pop the battery back in.
Uh-oh, battery's still dry. All right, let's double check that this battery is actually dry. So a good dry lithium cell primary battery should be. I can't really measure that, can I? This is probably a ground. We'll find out. Nope. Oh, there we go. So, excuse the glare. The battery is at 2.99 volts, and since I'm measuring on the holder and the cart ground, you should be able to... I mean, it should be recognizing that voltage. So I don't know if 3 volts is too low, because a good battery should be in the 3.2 volt range. Oh, there it goes. Now it's not saying battery dry. How interesting. So let's set the time. Is January 18, and the time is 18.42, or thereabouts. Oops. Oops. 43. There we go. Leave auto save off. We are not on the most current firmware version, but that is okay. I have the new firmware on this card, but I don't necessarily want to update it if I don't have to, because I don't recall that the new firmware actually adds any features. Uh, I don't know what else to check. I think that's pretty much it. Oh, that doesn't work. Oh, yeah, it does. It just takes a while. Excellent. Anyway. So... If your Easy Flash happens to have that one particular problem, then that's how you fish, fix it. But again, I, I've already said this like three times, but I feel I have to reiterate it because I haven't said it enough. If your Easy Flash is under warranty, do that first. Don't just resort to trying to fix it yourself and then try and go for the warranty. Once you start fucking around with the solder joints, if it still doesn't work, it's yours. There's no more warranty. But before I continue, let's see if we can't fix this button. There's a little bit of flux on the inside of this. So I am going to wipe it off with this cotton swab here. So yeah, this button would have been screwed. All right, let's use the tweezers. Oh, my tweezers have flux on them too. That doesn't quite work. Okay. Is that? Oh shoot, I just lost that. I'll be right back. I found it. Don't worry. That will go on there like that. More or less. And then we gotta drop the cover on, which I probably also have to clean out. Yes. Oh, 
Luckily, I didn't actually break anything, though this cover isn't supposed to come off. Actually, I'm going to take that off because this looks like it goes on one of two ways. You can see the uh, top has clips on it, the side does not. So do the clips go on? All right, looks like the clips go on the sides with the solder legs. So it goes there. That goes like that. Bend the clip back down. Maybe. Feels like the bottom's on, but maybe the top isn't. should be it. Let's put the top on. And for those wondering, unfortunately these cases are full custom um, before I put this together. These, uh, if you want a new shelf here, Junior, unfortunately that's not happening. Because if we these side by side you can see the screw post is just in a different position and that's unfortunately the way it is you can make your own custom shell with no screw post if you want but you'll have a gaping hole in the back and it won't be pretty that still seems to work And it still resets fine. Uh, personally, if you ruin that button, you're really not losing much. You just have to do that instead of hit the button. But it wasn't too it wasn't too difficult to fix, so not that big of a deal. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this is helpful to someone. Um, any of you DIY enterprising types, um, I hope this helps you out. But again, for the fifth time or whatever it is at this point if you have the warranty go that route first don't bother trying to fix it if you can get it replaced for free i mean that's just the way it is you shouldn't have to fix something that is guaranteed uh, if you are out of warranty for instance i was technically out of warranty this was a warranty return the original customer who owned this returned it because it did not work, and that's how I got my hands on it. So obviously there was no warranty path for me, but had it been the one that I purchased, I would have returned it. See what I'm saying? Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments. Uh, be sure to check out the description. I always try and throw links to uh, helpful things, references, stuff like that. There are some GBA temp threads um, one in particular that actually gave me the inspiration for this. In that thread, his problem was one of those two chips, but I think my problem was that big uh, Spartan chip instead. I, un unfortunately, I, I did so many things at once, I don't know for sure, but just based on the fact that I had to touch that chip up like three or four times after I did everything else, it was probably that one. But uh, I don't know, there we go. I'll have to figure out what to do with this cart. Have a good night, guys.